This is how I use my cap tester when I'm working on vintage electronics. This is a Heath kit condenser checker. It uses an eye tube for the indication. And you can check resistance and capacitance with this tester. What I'll do is I'll pull the cap out of the circuit. In this case, this was installed on a PC board. I don't think you can read that, but I'll read it. It says 0.1 at 200 volts. So I will put it into the cap terminals, like so. Yeah, sometimes I'll use wire clips with leads on it to do this, but. Okay, I put it in there. You should make sure it's in a secure, but I'm just doing this quickly. The next thing you do is, since it's a point one, I'm going to use the selector to get in the range. A point one is kind of on the outside of both ranges. I'm going to go to, with the point oh oh one, the point oh five. Hope you can see that. This range is point oh oh one to point five. So then what you do is you adjust the bridge and wait for the eye to null out. Oop, there it goes. It's opening somewhat, but not all the way. It should open up quite a bit more than that. That's about at most a third. But anyway, I'll get this as open as I can, which is right there. So it's doing something, and it happened to be pointed at about... Uh, Actually, it's a little bit high. That's like about a point two, so the value isn't very accurate either. But when it's only opening like that and the value's off, I'm going to go ahead and do another test, which I would do anyway, even if it opened all the way. I'll go check it for voltage, for leakage at rated voltage. I don't have a 200 volt setting here. It jumps from 150 to 250. So for starters, I'll go with the 150. Let's see if it leaks at 150. I turn the leakage switch here to leakage. We watch the eye. And what it should do, it's opened up now because it's no longer testing the value, is it should momentarily close and then fully open as the capacitor charges up. Let's see if it does that. Well, it's a pretty large value cap, and the larger value caps take longer to open, but not this long. There's clearly something wrong. Just for fun, I'm going to drop down to 25 volts. And see what happens. And it kind of opens, but not very much. This is definitely not good. A, a 200 volt rated capacitor should should not should fully open at 25 volts. So what we'll do is now. Now this is important. I'll leave the capacitor. I'll leave the dial settings alone. I'll return back to the starting point. Make sure that the I is still nulled. Take the capacitor out. And now I go in and I replace it with the replacement capacitor. Remember I had a 0.01, so this is a 105. So that should be a 0.1. Set that wrong on purpose. And now we'll say, well, it should be about the same. I'll move this around a little bit. Ooh, that's interesting. I'm not getting the eye open at all. Very strange. That doesn't make any sense at all. Huh. Just for the fun of it, I'll go up one notch and see what happens. Where's this thing opening? Oh, it's opening way back here. So what happened is, I'm in the 0.1 to 50 UF range here, and, I, and that scale is right here, 0.1 to 1. Oh, so this is 1 UF. I did this mistake on purpose. This is a 105 which is one zero and then five zeros after that picofarads which totals up to one uf one farad uh, which is a very large capacitor but anyway the reason i did that is i want to show you the kind of obvious mistake you can make when you grab capacitors especially when they're marked differently i.e 105 versus 0.1 just a different way of uh, naming capacitors so what i'll do is i'll so clearly i grabbed the wrong cap 
using the cap tester in this way will prevent you from making those 10 times errors by misreading the uh, value on the cap. I'm going to go back and re it with the old bad cap just to get it right about here. This time, I'm going to select the correct cap, which in this case is a 0.1. I'm going to go ahead and put the 0.1 in here. We're going to try this again. And let's see how it nulls this time. Oh, it's close. As you can see, the eye is already partially opened. It fully opens this time. And it fully, op fully opens right at the 0.1 setting. So because I had to adjust the dial indicator a little bit, that tells me that I'm in the right ballpark, the correct cap and selected. Even if it was a brand new cap, which this one isn't, but if I was using a brand new cap, I always go through and double check the voltage. Uh, this one's rated at 600 volts, so I'm just going to go ahead and ramp it all the way up to as high as I can go on my cap tester, which is cap tester, which is 400. We'll see how the eye reacts. It's the way it's supposed to react. And I go opens all the way. That's the way it's supposed to work. This is a good cap. After doing that test, I can now install it and be confident that I've got the right value cap and that it's a good cap. You should always check for its leakage even on brand new ones. These, these yellow caps these are not always the best quality in my humble opinion. I don't trust them. I always check them. I have had bad brand new caps. There's nothing worse than going through and recapping and putting in a brand new shorty capacitor uh, and that'll really ruin your day. You have to go back and troubleshoot more. You, you know, the last thing you want to check is a brand new component that you just put in. You're sure that can't be it. Even when all your diagnostics start pointing towards it, you still don't want to go there. And then finally say, I just put that in. Let me pull it out. Boom, it's shorted. No fun. Anyway, that's all for today. That's fun with cap testers.